Hi everybody, this is Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make this hat here. I like it, oh, I really, really like it a lot. I think it turned out really nice and um, I almost want to keep it for myself, but I did make it for the Lion Brands Hat Not Hate campaign. I think I might make myself another one with the same type of yarn. But anyways, this is what it looks like. It starts out with uh, post stitches and then it runs uh, with bobbles and posts down. Now this is an intermediate pattern. You will, uh, but beginners, feel free to try. Um, I like it because it's got the bobbles in, in the post in it, but it's still airy enough. I think that would work well for a spring hat. And I like to wear hats in spring. I like to wear hats all the time, so <laughs> I really like this hat. So um, you will need to know how to do uh, single crochet, double crochet. You're going to need to know how to do the bobble. I will show you how to do the bobble. But uh, also you're going to need to know how to do front post and back post triple crochets. So those are the majority of the stitches used for that. But what do you say? I'm going to go ahead and get started. I got to hide that tail. I'm sorry. Here, let me give you a quick measurement. Now, this should fit 21, 21 and a half inch head. And uh, I think it's about seven and a half inches long. You can always make that brim longer. Or you can make the whole hat longer and make it a slouchy if you want to. But let's go ahead and get started on this. All right. For this project, I am using a Lion Brand Date Nights yarn. Now, this is an 82 acrylic 18 polyester blend, and it is a medium weight number four. You do not have to use this yarn. Any medium weight number four will work. This one is nice and sparkly. Now, there are 273 yards in this cake, and I think you're going to need about 200 yards. This hat is um, a little bit of a yarn eater because of the bobbles and it is a bit time consuming, but I think it turned out super cool and it's worth the effort that I put into it. Um, I think you guys will probably agree. Um, um, the color I'm using though is Lapis in case you're interested. And then you're gonna need a size J, which is a six millimeter crochet hook. All right, first off, we're gonna start off as always with a slip knot on our hook. And now we are going to work a chain of three. And we're gonna slip stitch into the first stitch to form a ring. If you prefer to use the magic circle, that would be fine too. Okay, we're gonna chain one. Now that chain one does not count as a stitch. What we wanna do is we wanna work 12 double crochets through the center of this ring right here. So we're gonna yarn over, go through the ring, draw the yarn back up, and then go ahead and do our double crochet. So that would be our first double crochet. We wanna do a total of 12, so that would be one, two, three, There's four, and five. All right, I've made it to the end of round one and I have my 12 double crochets there. You can usually pull your tail and then close up that center circle just a little bit more and then later on we can sew it together at the end. So we're gonna end round one by slip stitching into the first double crochet, not the chain one, but the first double crochet like that. Now we're going to start round two. We're going to chain one and we're going to be working right back there into that same spot that we just slip stitched into. So this spot right here and we're going to work two double crochets into that spot. And now I'm going to work two double crochets in every stitch all the way around until I make it back to my starting point. So 
So there's two in that one. Two in the next one. And two in each stitch all the way around. All right, I've made it to the end of round two and you should have a total of 24 stitches now. So I'm going to end round two by slip stitching into my first double crochet. Now we're going to start round three. We are going to chain one and we're going to work one double crochet back into that very first stitch there that we just slip stitched into. Now the next stitch we're going to do an increase. What we're going to do is we're going to put one double crochet into the top of the next stitch. And then we're going to do one front post triple crochet around the post of the same stitch that we just double crocheted into. So you can use your fingers and pull your stitches apart. And you can see that we went into the top of this stitch right here. So we're going to go around the post of it and we're going to work a front post triple crochet. So we're going to yarn over twice, go around the post of that same stitch that we just double crocheted into. And then we go ahead and work our triple crochet around the post. Just like that. And that is what we're going to kind of repeat all the way around. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put one double crochet into the next stitch. And now the next stitch will be our increase stitch. So we'll do one double crochet into the top of it. And then we, in the same stitch around the post, we will work a front post triple crochet. So we're going to yarn over twice like we're going to do a triple. We're going to go around a post of the same stitch that we just put the double crochet in. Like that. It always helps me to pinch my work like that. And then go ahead and do your triple crochet as normal. So we're increasing, but we're also adding posts into the mix. Just for some texture. Okay, we're going to repeat that again. We're going to put one double crochet into the top of the next stitch. Now the next stitch we're going to increase. So we're going to put one double crochet into the top of it. And then we're going to front post triple around the same stitch that we just double crocheted in the top of. And that's what we're going to repeat all the way around until we get back to the beginning. One more time. One double crochet into the next stitch. Next stitch will be our increase stitch. So we will put one double crochet into the top of it. And then one front post triple crochet around the post of that same stitch. And we're going to repeat this until we get back around to the end of row three. All right, I'm coming to the end of round three. You should have ended in your increase stitch there. Your last stitch should have had a double crochet and a front post triple. And we're going to go ahead and end by slip stitching into our first double crochet. And you'll have a total of 36 stitches. So now we're going to work on round four. We are going to chain one. And we want to go back into that very first stitch there and put a double crochet. And now we want to put a front post triple crochet around the next stitch. So don't double crochet on top of it. We're just doing a straight front post triple crochet around the next stitch. Now the next stitch will be our increase stitch. And as you can see, it's a post stitch from the previous row. So we will do a double crochet in the top of it, regular double crochet. 
and a front post triple crochet around that post. Just like that. And that's what we're going to repeat now. So we'll start off again by putting one double crochet into the next stitch. One front post triple crochet into the next. So front post triple around the next. Now the next stitch you can see is a post stitch and that will be our increase. So we will put one double crochet into the top of it. And one front post triple crochet around that post of the same stitch. Just like that. And that's what we're going to keep repeating all the way around. So again, I'll show you, we're going to put one double crochet into the next stitch. One front post triple crochet in the next. And then the next is a post stitch. That is our increase. So we put a double crochet into the top of it. And then a front post triple around the same stitch. So I'm going to repeat this pattern all the way around until I get to the end of the row. Okay, I've made it to the end of round four. And you should have ended again with the increase of double crochet and front post triple in that last stitch. And go ahead and end by slip stitching into your first double crochet. 48 stitches now. We're going to chain one for start round five. We're going to go ahead and put a double crochet right back into that same first stitch. And we will follow the posts we're going to put a front post triple into this next stitch and then we will put a regular double crochet into the next stitch so that we just did three stitches in a row we did the double the front post triple the double now this next post stitch will be our increase so we will put a regular double crochet into the top of it and a front post triple around the post of it keeping the keeping them posts lined up just like that again we'll start off by putting one double crochet into the next stitch front post triple into the next it's front post triple from the previous round remember we, we keep our posts lined up double crochet into the next stitch so again we did three stitches in a row there we did the double crochet front post triple double crochet now this next stitch this next post stitch is our increase stitch so we got to put a double crochet into the top of it and a front post triple around the post of it just like that and that's what we're going to repeat all the way around for round five again i'll show you one more time we're going to put a double crochet into the next stitch front post triple into the next which is a post from the previous round double crochet into the next and the next post stitch here is increase so we're going to put a double crochet into the top of it and 
a front post triple crochet around the post of it. So this is what I'm going to repeat all the way around for round five until I get back to my starting point. Okay, I have made it to the end of round five and you should end it again in an increase where you did the double crochet and the front post triple into the same stitch and you should have 60 stitches now. What we're going to do now is in row five by or round five by slip stitching into our first double crochet. Now we're going to be working on the opposite side of our work. So what we need to do is chain one and turn because we're going to be working bobbles and for bobbles to turn out the way you want them to, they have to be worked from the back side. So we're going to start off with a bobble right here in this very first stitch that we slip stitched into. And this is how we're going to do the bobble. We're going to yarn over and we're going to go into that stitch and draw up a loop and yarn over and go through the first two loops on your hook. We want to do that five times total. So that would be number one. Again, go in to the same stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over and go through the first two loops on your hook. So that's two times. Again, yarn over, go into the same stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over, go through the first two loops on your hook. Catch three times, yarn over, go into the same stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over, go through the first two loops on your hook. That's four times. One more time. We're going to yarn over, go into the same stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over, and go through the first two loops on your hook. You should have six loops that remain. We're going to yarn over and go through all six loops. And then you want to give it a tight pull. And then we are going to do a back post triple crochet into the next stitch. So we're going to yarn over twice. And if you look, it's actually a post stitch on the other side. We always got to keep our post stitches lined up. But since we're working on the back side of our work, we have to do back post stitches now and instead of front posts. So we're going to go around that next stitch from the behind like that. Now the post is on the back of your hook. Go ahead and triple crochet. It's okay if you get confused and mess up a few times. I'm not going to lie. I already messed up once and pulled it out. <laughs> just start over. I just edit mine. <laughs> So, so now we're going to put one double crochet in each of the next two stitches. So one double into the next stitch, one double into the next stitch, and then the next stitch you can tell is a post stitch by looking at it if you flip it over on the other side. So we need to do a back post triple crochet around the next stitch. Like that and now we're going to repeat what we just did starting with the bobble so in this next stitch we're going to work a bobble we're going to yarn over and we're going to go into it and drop a loop yarn over and go through the first two loops on your hook we're going to do that five times remember that would be number one again we're going to yarn over go in drop a loop yarn over and go through the first two loops two times. First two loops, three times. First two loops, four times, one more time. First two loops, you should have six loops that remain. Yarn over and go through all six. Give it a really tight pull. And now the next stitch needs to be a back post triple crochet. That might be your trickiest stitch right there because you still have that bobble on your hook. But once you get it down, you'll be pushing them out in no time. 
and then we will put one double crochet in each of the next two stitches. And then we will back post triple crochet into the next stitch. You can see on the opposite side that it's a post. We got to keep our posts lined up. So back post triple crochet. Like that. And now we're going to repeat again from the bobble. So we're going to bobble into the next stitch. Six loops on my hook, yarn over, yarn over, go through all six, make sure you pull it good and tight. Next stitch has to be a back post triple crochet. Come on, double crochet into the next two stitches. back post triple crochet in the next and then we we will start all over again repeat with starting with the bobble so when you flip your work over to the right side you can see your bobbles start to emerge. You'll see them better the more rows that we do and you'll be able to see the post stitches better. My yarn is a bit dark too so that might make it where I could see them actually pretty good, but my camera's not picking it up, picking them up that well, but I think it looks pretty cool. So I'm gonna continue working here on the back side like we've been doing until I get all the way around and back to my starting point. Okay, I, I've made it to the end of round six. You said it, you should have ended in a back post triple crochet there. And I'm going to end the round by slip stitching into the, my first bobble. So right here, side of it. And you should have a total now of 60 stitches, 12 of which of those will be bobbles. So when you look at it, you can see, like I said previously, my yarn's a little dark, but the po there's two posts that go along the side of this bobble. And there's two posts here and in between are two irregular double crochets. So it's actually kind of neat. So now we're going to start round seven. Now round seven and eight are the repeat rounds. So what we're going to do for round seven, we are going to chain one and we're going to turn our work back over to the front side. And we are going to start off by working a double crochet in the very first stitch right here where this bobble's at. So kind of right on top of the bobble, we'll work a double crochet. That. And then we're going to do a front post triple around this post stitch. And we're going to double crochet into the next two stitches. And then we're going to front post triple around this post stitch here. Since we're on the front of our work, we do front posts. And we are going to do a double crochet on top of this bobble. So right up here in the top you can kind of pull your bobble up and you'll see where you need to go and just put a double crochet there and we're just going to kind of repeat that front post triple crochet into the next stitch double crochet in each of the next two stitches we're just kind of following the posts you know 
keeping the posts lined up. There's a front post and the neck front post triple crochet in the next stitch because it is a post stitch. And then on top of the bobble, we're going to put a regular double crochet. Front post triple crochet into the next stitch. And repeating this. So one regular double crochet into the next two stitches. Front post triple around the next. You can see it's the post for the previous round. Double crochet on top of the bobble. So I'm just going to repeat this pattern all the way around until I get back to my starting point. All right, I've made it to the end of a row around seven. My last stitch should be a front post triple crochet and I'm going to end by slip stitching into my first double. Round eight is kind of just a repeat of round six, I guess, but um, round eight, round sevens and eight are the repeat. So what we're gonna do is chain one and turn our work. So now we're working on the back side of it again. Every other row we are working on the back side. So we're gonna start off by putting a bobble into the very, very first stitch. Remember to pull that bobble tight and then triple crochet, back post, triple crochet around the next. Oops. It's always the hardest one. <laughs> and then we do regular double crochet into the next two stitches. back post triple crochet around the next and then we're going to bobble into the next double crochet Pull it tight, front post triple, I'm sorry, back post triple into the next stitch. If you're working on the back, it's always back post. Double crochet into the next two stitches. Back post triple around the next. And then we start again with the bobble into the next. Pull it tight, back post triple around the next. double crochet in each of the next two back post triple around the next and then we start again and bobble into the next so if we look at it from the front that's what it starts to look like we're starting to row up our bobbles but there is a double crochet space in between each of them i think it's looking pretty dang cool actually myself i like it so i'm just going to keep once i finish this round out i'm going to turn my work around and repeat round seven then I'll turn my work around and repeat round eight. So it's just a repeat of round seven and eight. Make sure every time you're working on the back side of your work, it will be your bobble stitch row and you do back post triples. Whenever you're working on the front of your work, 
there will be no bobbles on this row. There'll be a double crochet where the bobble goes and it will be front post triples. So front of the work, no bobbles, front post triples. Back of the work will be bobbles and back post triples. So I'm gonna keep continuing. You'll always have 60 stitches in every round until I get my hat as long as I want it to be. All right, I have done a total from round one all the way down 16 rows. You can do more if you wish or less. You can make it a slouchy beanie by just, you know, making this longer would make it a slouchy hat. If you're crocheting for lime brands, hat, like, hat not hate like I am, slouchies are um, acceptable there. So I just did the 16th row and um, now I didn't, I'm going to chain one and turn my work. Okay, for row 17, what I'm going to do now is single crochet, a row single crochet. So I'm going to go back in that same stitch. I chained one and turned. Same stitch as that bobble there. And single crochet. And now I'm going to work across. And I'm going to put one single crochet in every stitch. So I'm not going to be working any more post stitches. No more bobbles. Nothing like that. You guys are probably like, yay. <laughs> Sometimes that stuff takes a while. So I'm working across putting one single crochet in every double crochet, every front post triple crochet, and on top of every bobble all the way around. I'm going to do this until I get back to my starting point. And then I'll make a nice clean edge on it. All right, I have made it around with one single crochet in every stitch and that would finish out row 17 or round 17. Um, I'm gonna go around again with another round of single crochet. So I'm gonna use a stitch marker here. So I'm just gonna put it right here at the end. So instead of slip stitching my next round, I'm just gonna continue on putting one single crochet in every stitch. So I'm gonna jump to my next single crochet. You, st you should have 60 stitches still here at the end of that round. I'm gonna jump to my next single crochet and now I'm gonna continue around again. This is round 18. Putting one single in every stitch. So we're just repeating round 17 until I get back to my stitch marker. All right, I've come to the end of round 18 and I'm not gonna do any more rows of single crochet. If you want to make your brim larger, that's fine. Whatever you wanna do, you can try it on and see. I'm gonna stop now. And what I'm gonna do is pull out my stitch marker. I still should have 60 stitches if you don't have that many. Just somewhere around there is close enough. I'm just gonna go ahead and end by slip stitching into the next stitch. Cup off your yarn and hide your tail. And that's it. Finito. It's done. I think it turned out super, super cool. Again, the bobbles and the cables are cool, but it looks like it's airy enough that uh, it would be a nice spring hat as well. I like it. I might keep this one for myself. No, 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 I won't. I'll make myself another one. <laughs> I'll give this one away. Maybe. No, I'm just joking. I'll, I'll give it away. But I, I might make myself one. I really like it. I think it turned out nice. So, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you make this hat or any of my other crochet projects, I'd really, really like to see a picture of them. Um, you can follow me on Facebook or run, like me on Facebook follow me on Instagram and then you can show me your stuff there. Um, I, I really like to see the things that people make from my tutorials and I'm going to put on the right hand side of the screen I'm going to put a link actually a playlist of all my tutorials that I have on YouTube in my YouTube library. I have hundreds of and hundreds of free crochet tutorials. Um, anything that you could think of anything that you could ever want to make. Um, i probably have just about everything multiples of it so um check that out as well and also don't forget to subscribe 
hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my tutorials or uh, yarn reviews. I do lots of yarn talk because I am a yarn lover. And that's it. Until next time, have a good night.